What is up YouTubers and lovers of all things budget cars and bikes? Welcome back to another video for 2019. A glorious, glorious bank holiday weekend in August down here in Cornwall. So I've actually been out on my very, very special bike. There will be a review on that in the next couple of months, I imagine. Something very, very special. I haven't actually done a review on that yet because I want to do a long-term kind of ownership of that. It's, as I said, a very special thing. It's not necessarily a budget bike, but it's something that I've wanted to get back into for a very long time. Uh, so watch out for that video. As I said, I've just been out on it because it's such a beautiful, beautiful day here in Cornwall. And then I decided, it may be an idea, to do a quick kind of first impressions, couple of week ownership review on this. Um, I have done what I would consider to be a similar video rather um, on the Kia Pro Seed or Seed Pro diesel that I had um, a year and a half ago maybe something like that so if you haven't seen that uh, take a quick look because I consider these cars to be very 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 similar um, the Kia was actually a two-door coupe this is a five-door hatchback which is fine um, I only bought this because I was in need of a car because I sold the Toyota Yaris if you, again if you've seen that video you'll know that I didn't get on with that didn't rate it at all sold that to a lovely lady up at north who actually paid somebody about 450 quid to have that collected from me and then delivered on a flatbed lorry all the way up to her near Liverpool um, but it was a lovely deal and I got my money back she got a car which was to her own admission a couple of grand cheaper than the dealers were selling it for so everyone was happy you know but then that led me to having no car um, and luckily for me within about two days this came up relatively local a young Polish lad effectively who was going back to Poland he was repatriating back to Poland and just needed to sell it uh, he'd had this for seven years Bearing in mind it's a 2009, so it's only 10 years old, and the previous owner to him had had it for three years. So it's only had two owners. An incredibly low mileage, 71,000 miles over two owners. So I was very happy with that. Now then, um, what do I think of it first impressions wise? I love the colour. Um, again, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know I love this kind of cobalt blue. I think it's a fantastic colour. The car, as I said, I wanted to try one of these. It, I, before I forget, it's actually a Hyundai i30. Um, you've probably worked that out for yourselves anyway from the title. But it's a 1.4 petrol because you know, again, if you've watched my channel before, I don't particularly like diesels. Um, so I jumped on this 1.4 petrol, super economical cheap to run cheap tax cheap insurance cheap pretty much everything and a cheap price truth be told it came into me at a pretty good price because the guy was going back to poland this week i think and it was very local so i went to see him i made him an offer he was happy with that everyone's happy i've had it about two weeks now um and if I was going to quickly compare it to the Kia Proceed, I'd have to say it's not really on a par when it comes to comfort. Um, build quality inside, we'll talk about that in a minute, because that's surprisingly good. But the doors, when you close them, uh, they're a little bit tinny. I mean, I don't know if the camera microphone will pick this up, but it's a bit kind of, you know, everything's a little bit kind of... There's no real substance to it in that respect. But it is, I guess, a cheap Japanese five-door hatchback car. Um, these new, I don't know what they were, if I'm honest. I haven't had a chance to check up on that. You can do your own research. But value-wise, these now, you can pick these up for between 1250 quid and 2500 I mean, it's literally, the scope is that wide. If it's the sportier models, obviously, the price goes up. But this is the basic 1.4 petrol, um, and it's 10 years old with 71,000 miles, as I said. So, you know, this one I would value between 1500 and 2000 That's where I am with it at the moment. It did need a little bit of TLC here and there. It needed a bloody good wash, if I'm honest. But as you can see, if we look around the car, there's no dent really to speak of there's no scratches down the side this side at least apart from this little corner here which you couldn't do I mean I could uh, fill that and spray it if I wanted to but it's a 10 year old Hyundai so you know without putting the car down too much why would I bother I think in hindsight this might just be a bit of polish here yeah, there we go um, and it's got actually the world's worst bloody stone chip just about there which is starting to rust um, I've treated that already um, and I've got some touch-up paint coming which will deal with that but generally speaking apart from on this little corner here 
the rest of the car is pretty straight. There's no dents, no scratches, no real scuffs. Well, I say there's no dents. There's this tiny little one here, which I keep seeing on cars I buy. I don't know what people do, but it's there. Again, I could have a PDR guy come and sort that out. And there's a couple of these, again, car park ding. I don't know if you'll see these on the camera. Um, but again, I'm not gonna worry about that. It is what it is. It's a cheap five door hatchback Japanese car. And I'm going to treat it as such. You know, I, I bought it for around about 1,500 quid. I fancy it's worth that all day long. It's going to need, as I said, a couple of hundred quid thrown at it. The Once again, the rear disc covers, the splash guards, they're rotten on here, so I'll probably end up having to do those. Uh, but that's the only real negative. This little bit here as well, there's a couple of little scratches on this uh, boot lid here. What I plan on doing is what I've done before, because it's got a straight edge across here, I'm going to get some carbon fibre sheet and I'm going to lay that over the top of here all the way around, cut it and just leave it like that. Uh, so it has the kind of black, blue, black, blue kind of affair going on. And I think that, w well, it will cover up all of those scratches there. And I might even get one of these boot, rubber boot kind of thingies that goes across here or a chrome one, just to smarten it up. This scratch here, there is absolutely nothing I can do about. And I shall be honest with that, obviously, where, if anybody comes to see it. But 10 years old, 71, just over 71,000 miles, uh, 1.4 petrol, cam chain as well. Always really good to have a cam chain on an engine. Um, but even, well, I suppose if it did have a belt, it would be due for a replacement by now, just on the age. Because um, although they they do say the modern Japanese cars, 100,000 miles or thereabouts, or 10 years. Now, this is 10 years. So, you know, you'd be looking at replacing that. Um, now, what do I think of it? Um, as I said, it's a kind of a first impressions review more than anything else. Um, because I don't think I'm going to have it long. I've wanted, I've wanted to try one because I wanted to compare it to the Kia's. And it's kind of comparable, I suppose, with the price range, because the Kia, I think I bought that for about 1800 and this was around about 1500 uh, The Kia was a 2010, though. I did prefer the Kia. If I'm honest, the Kia did it for me more than this does, because this, for whatever reason, just seems to be very tinny. You know, there's not much going on with it. The interior, oh, I forgot to clean that bit there, but the interior is actually surprisingly nice for a cheap little car. Um, I'm quite impressed with that. We'll obviously get in and have a better look because as you can see you get a decent bolster I mean again compare uh, considering rather this is a 1.4 petrol Hyundai I like those seats and they really do hug you in switch gears all very good um, the original over mats as well there's no real kind of damage to these plastics here which you often get um, with these cheaper Japanese cars no damage on the driver's seat here at all I mean to be honest, the guy did have these cheap and horrible nasty seat covers on the front of here, probably for work, I'm assuming. And one of the first things I did as soon as I bought the car is I took them off thinking, oh my God, what am I going to find underneath here? And lo and behold, as you can see, they look pretty bloody good. Center arm, arm rest as well, which is always really nice to have in a car, but unfortunately that um, yeah, needs a little bit of something. But again, nice to have. And as often is the case with these cheaper Japanese cars, they actually do give you a couple of toys. You've got a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket there, another cigarette lighter here, USB connection, iPod or aux connections here. You get this little drawer here, which I don't quite know what you're supposed to put in there, but your phone maybe, I don't know, whatever. But it has got a little bit of a, an issue here. Sometimes it closes, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you get another little sunglasses holder here as well, which is kind of cool, and these, weird little lights here uh, for the mirrors but they kind of switch off on this rocker when you close that up which I've not seen that before normally it's a kind of a connection there that notices when it's up and when it's down but I've not seen it on a rocker switch so that's something new interior wise dashboard uh, very nice I really do like this I mean the switch gear again very Audi A3-esque in that respect very tactile it feels very solid air conditioning works beautifully all these buttons, as I said, you know, there's a real kind of tactile feel to them. Um, the radio, the same kind of thing there as well. This, I'm assuming, was probably for an optional sat-nav. I can't think of anything else it could be in that respect. Sound system, very good. Um, I'm quite impressed. And I love, one of the things I've always liked about these cars is the blue um, lighting. Uh, do I have the key in my pocket? I don't know if it will show you because it's a very sunny day here. Um, oh, bear with me a sec. Uh, there we go. That's the dash there, the little binnacle. Let me turn that radio off. Um, 
nice. Uh, not overly sporty, but, you know, I, I can live with that. Lots of different functions there. It'll tell you what you're returning miles per gallon, the usual kind of stuff. Fuel gauge, temperature gauge, which is always nice. And when you haven't got the radio on, you get that as well, which is very useful. Um, what else interior-wise? Not much, really, guys, to be fair. Um, it's, it's a nice little place to be, yeah, as I would say. Decent door pocket as well. You can get a bottle of water in there, as you can see. I'll show you in the boot, um, although I believe there's a hoover in here. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, yeah, quite cavernous. But you do get a proper spare wheel, which is always nice. And I think he gave me the locking wheel nut, which is, again, always nice and something you should always, always check out. Now, what's wrong with this car? I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll have a look at the under the bonnet first, and then I'll tell you a couple of things that I've noticed, uh, which I didn't notice on the test drive. So there it is, the 1.4 petrol Hyundai i30 lump. Chain driven, as you can see, there's no cover there for uh, a belt or anything else. New battery. I've given this a bit of a clean, nothing over the top because, you know, sometimes the more you make or try to make something look really, really, really clean, people kind of get suspicious. Um, so I tend to give it a once over and that's pretty much it. This is not a throwaway car, but this is something I wanted to try. I've tried it. It's been very useful, but I'm not going to keep it. Um, I'll tell you what I'm looking for in a minute, but I'm not going to keep this one. There's a couple of things here which will polish out. As you can see, I can pretty much do it with my finger. These lights, again, 2000 wet and dry, if I could be bothered. They're not so bad that I'm going to really worry about that. This is just literally, as I said, buy it in, check it out, use it until I can find something better, sell it on to somebody who wants it, you know, because I, again, I, I mean, I bought this because I wanted to try it out. I love the colour and it was low mileage and it was local. That's the only reason. I didn't buy it because I particularly want a Hyundai i30. And I've tried it, and some things I like, and some things I don't. One of the things I don't like is the uh, master switch, as they call it, here, that one down there. It operates every single window apart from the passenger one, which will only go up from the master switch. It won't go down. It works perfectly fine from the passenger side, but for whatever reason, well, I'm pretty sure I know the reason for that. It's exactly the same reason as the Kia. It's the electrical connections actually in the switch itself. They need taking out and then spraying with some contact cleaner and then putting back together, and it should work. But, uh, you know, a second-hand one uh, tested is only 25 quid. Again, if I could be bothered to replace it, I would, but it's not just a simple case of take the door card off and whip it out. You've actually got to take the door card out and then this whole thing here underneath here is a sealed unit. You've got to take the back of that off and then you've got to push all these through and then put the new ones in, etc., etc. And if I'm honest, guys, I can't be asked. It works to go up. All the other windows work from the driver's seat um, and the passenger can use it in the passenger seat if he wants to. So as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. That's not a problem for me. What else? Um, there's a slight, slight, slight um, kind of... It's hard to explain. Cuts slight like notchiness to the steering. Far heavier than I expected it to be. Compared to the Kia Proceed, the steering on this is very heavy, um, which did surprise me. I thought they'd be very, very similar, and I kind of figured they'd be using similar parts, you know. Um, but maybe not. I don't know if that's a common fault. But as you can see, I mean, the car, generally speaking, is it's kind of nice i like it i wonder what it would look like in a two-door coupe i think that would look kind of sexy but you know i again if you've watched any of my videos you'll know i prefer a coupe to a five door anyway i don't have kids to worry about um it's only ever me so i kind of like to have a coupe it's a little bit sexier isn't it oh copper's not hanging about is he um i was going to consider doing the brake calipers as well but because it's not a very sporty car it's only a 1.4 petrol what are you going to do with them you're going to just paint them silver i guess but as you can see they're actually in pretty good nick they're not rotten or anything um so i'm not going to try and kind of make them look nicer because they're rusty because they're not you know they're just brake calipers off a 10 year old car he's put new pirelli tires um he said to the seller that he put them on all round but that's uh, horse bollocks because he didn't um that's not a new tire that's for damn sure um that's probably got about three mil if you're lucky on that one the rear ones i think um and that one there perhaps well he put three out of four then maybe <laughs> but they are pirelli so they weren't cheap in that respect and at the same time he put new discs and new pads all round so job done you know i don't have to worry about that i'm going to give it an oil change and filter change as well because you can buy those kits for about 25 quid off ebay so you know why wouldn't i, I know exactly where it stands then for the next uh, buyer as it were 
two keys, huge amounts of paperwork, the original owner's manuals, all that kind of stuff. So that's the car, generally speaking, what it looks like, anything I found negative on it, etc., etc. One of the things that I don't like about this car and I don't quite understand is the economy. Now, this is a 1.4 petrol, and I kind of tried to compare that to the 1.2 Peugeot 208 petrol that I had and a little bit on the Yaris as well, which is a petrol 1.5, that being a hybrid, of course. But the economy, the miles per gallon on this is crap, if, if you compare it to those two. Now, the Peugeot 208 was returning at 70 miles an hour, motorway speeds, it was returning about, around about 55 miles to the gallon. The Yaris was about the same, and I've tested this at 50 miles an hour and at 70 miles an hour. At 70 miles an hour, believe it or not, this car struggles to return 40 miles to the gallon, which did surprise me. For a 1.4, it can't be that much heavier than the Yaris or the Peugeot. Um, so it's a 1.4 petrol that's returning at motorway speeds around about 40 to 42 miles to the gallon, which it surprised me. I think that's pretty crap, to be honest. I would expect that from more from a 2-litre. Um, yeah, um, it does all right around about 50 miles to the gallon. If you're just cruising around about 50 miles an hour in fifth gear, then it'll return around about 52 to 55, which is fine. But it's not a motorway muncher, you know, it really isn't in that respect. And as I said, if a 1.2 Peugeot 208 petrol can return 55 at 70 miles an hour why is this only returning 40 ish mm, it, i don't understand it i mean it's not like it's done 150,000 miles and it hasn't been serviced and the engine's running poorly and it needs a decoke or anything like that i think it's just not very good on miles per gallon which is a shame because it's when you buy 1.4 generally speaking you tend to buy them because you think of an economy in mind you know you're thinking of miles per gallon um you know young drivers in that respect and this I don't imagine the 1.6 is going to be any worse miles per gallon, I bloody hope not, than this. Um, so if you had the choice and you were choosing it for economy, I'd go for the 1.6, I guess. Um, I don't know exactly what models they do in this range, if I'm honest. I maybe should have researched that. But if you want to, you go ahead. Um, I'm only basing this on the 1.4 petrol. And as I said, if, you, if they do a 1.6, which I'm pretty sure they do, and they obviously do diesel models, um, there are more economical ones out there. You know, and it's going to be quicker. It's it's a bit slow, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> it's a 1.4, I guess. Um, and although it's a five-door hatchback, it looks pretty big. It's not really, not not compared to the um, Yaris, which was a similar kind of size, and not compared to the Peugeot 208, 208 rather, which wasn't much smaller, but managed to return 15 miles per gallon more, and it was uh, 200 cc smaller. So I don't know. Um, would I recommend this for, for economy, miles per gallon, etc.? No, I, I, I wouldn't, because I think you could get a better model of one of these, and it would probably return uh, the same or better miles per gallon. So if you're looking to buy a 1.4 petrol, one of these Hyundai i30s uh, for economy, don't bother, because you know you're be there are better cars out there, um, realistically, for the money. I mean, it is a lot of car for the money, I suppose, when you consider it's a 2009 with very low miles, and you can pick it up for about 1,500 quid to 2000 um yeah i guess in that respect but you get what you pay for you know i keep going on again about the peugeot 208 because i just was incredibly surprised with that car pleasantly so you know i'd buy another one i'd like to have a go in uh, one of the turbos uh the gti I'd, I'd love to have a go in that because i found the technology inside the comfort levels the quiet cabin all the rest of it, i found that brilliant this yeah not so much really i mean the road noise, uh, the road rumble, as I would say, at, at motorway speeds, is pretty deafening, to be told, uh, to be truthful, rather. I wouldn't want to drive more than 100 odd miles at, seven, at motorway speeds, you know, 70, 80 miles an hour in this, because it's, it's noisy. It really is. It lets you know you're in a little Japanese tin can, um, which is a shame because the Kia Pro C didn't. That was really, really quiet in the cabin. Um, it, obviously, it was a diesel, so it returned better at miles per gallon. Um, the Peugeot was much quieter. The Yaris was much quieter. This is just a noisy little five-door hatchback, really. I won't slag it off too much because, as I said, I mean, it was 1,500 quid to me or thereabouts, and they sell between 1,500 and two and a half grand, depending on, you know, the spec and the model. I wouldn't pay more than, say, 19995 for one of these, and then it would have to have full-service history. Um, but I guess bodywork-wise, yeah, there's not really very much wrong with this car. So I, I would expect this to sell for around about, well, asking price of 19995 
with a premise that you would probably take 1850 on it. I think that's what its residual value is, around about 1,850 quid, because you've got a couple of things like all the owner's books, two keys, very low mileage, full MOT, et cetera, et cetera. So I think 1850 is probably around about the yardstick for the price on one of these. But again, if you're going to buy this for economy, don't bother because it's not very economical in that respect. It's a very new car for very little money, but there are better ones out there. As I said, the Proceed being an example, you can get one of those for the same price. And if I had an option of the Kia Proceed two-door coupe like I had before all this, I know which one I'd be going for. Um, lovely colour, not a terrible looking car, as you can see, front and rear spots, all the rest of it. You know, it's handsome enough as a car. But again, if you are going to spend getting on for two grand on a car, there are better ones out there, um, even though know, it's 10 years old. I mean, 2009 still seems to me to be kind of a modern car. But, you know, looking around, as I said, for two grand, you can do better, really. Um, the Kia Proceed just being a prime example. I mean, obviously, they all hark back to the similarities rather to the Audi A3 because it does look a little bit like that, I guess. Um, but yeah, And you wouldn't get an Audi A3 2009 for this kind of money. So if you can only afford one of these, then great, get one. You know, I, I can't not recommend it, but there are certain things that I do and don't like about it. You know, if you've got any questions about the car um, that I haven't covered in this, then drop it in the comments because I'm happy to answer them. If you've got one of these and you're getting better miles per gallon, maybe this one's, you know, got a little issue that I don't know about and haven't spotted yet. Because as I said, it does seem extraordinary to me that a 1.2 Peugeot is doing 15 miles a gallon more than this. Uh, that's just my maybe it's just the high Hyundai engines I don't know I've not had it long enough it's not a long-term review it's just a quick heads up on what I'm doing what I've just bought and what my thoughts are on the car um, if you haven't subscribed then do so I try to get a video out every four weeks or thereabouts bikes and cars and as I said in the intro for this video I have got a very very special bike coming up in fact I've got a couple of very special bikes coming up not necessarily budget ones but I've done something against the grain slightly this year I've gone balls out on a couple of bikes and spent a bit more than maybe I should have but I just kind of figured you can't take it with you can you so you know I bought a couple of things that I've wanted desperately to try for quite a while and I've done that you know whether I've still got them when you see the videos um, who knows but at the moment I've got something very very nice it's August and I'm enjoying having it this won't be around for long I'm going to put this up at 1995 and probably get 1800 for it I've spent a couple of hundred quid so I'll have experienced it I have told you what I think of it I won't keep it I don't don't particularly like it. Um, I appreciate it's a, it's a relatively modern car for Penny's money in that respect, you know, and it's got a few nice little things like the iPod connectivity, uh, USB, air conditioning, etc, etc. But I just think you can get more for your money these days as a buyer. You know, it is a, always a buyer's market. And for two grand, you know, if you look around, you could get something a bit better. But if you particularly like Hyundai's, I mean, they're incredibly reliable and chain driven. So that's a huge bonus. Cheap to tax, cheap to insure but not massively cheap to run. So that's the downside, from, for, on this one at least. Anyway, as I said, if you've got any comments about that, stick it in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed, do so. And I will see you in, well, you will see me in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care now.